Hello, I'm Andreas and today I want to show you a few special features about the Storkbuster in the field. You can adjust the air pressure using this knob. When retracting, the hoods automatically go up to full operating pressure. But the contact pressure of the hoods during work can be adjusted here. You can see the pressure on the gauge. The contact pressure from the hoods to the ground must be set individually depending on the ground conditions. We took the pressure off completely to show how important it is to set the air pressure correctly. And now you can see that although the stalk has been destroyed up to the first knot, the lower knot has remained everywhere. And now you can see that the pressure is set too high, and the hood started dragging the material with them. That's why you should always adjust the pressure according to the soil conditions, whether it's sandy, loamy, or heavy soil. Here we have now driven with an operating pressure of approximately 3.8 bar and now you can see the hoods do not slide, run nicely over the ground and the stubble is really broken up very well down to the node as it should be. To do any work on the stalk buster units or the air hoses, you must always turn off that shut off valve. As a result, the system is depressurized, and I can now move the hood back and forth by hand safely. Sometimes due to the beta rotating and throwing material, it can accumulate on the gearboxes of the middle gathering drum. The material on them should be removed for example with compressed air or a high pressure cleaner. The dirt falls away from the outer gathering drums when folding the header. Likewise, remove accumulations of dirt on the hoods. This is the Stork Buster support wheel. You can use the Stork Buster with the Stork Buster support wheel only. You can't use any other support wheels. In addition to the standard settings, which you can find in our support wheel video, the Stork Buster has another special feature. There is an indicator that allows to attach the support wheel safely. When attaching the support wheel, you must make sure that these two tips are exactly over each other. That means that the support wheel is parallel to the ground, and you can attach it safely. When the support wheel is correctly attached and the header is folded, the locking pole and the locking device will look like this. You can also see that from the cabin, using this indicator. This rod is extended. There are two rods on both sides of the attaching frame. One of them transmits an impulse to the forage harvester software and it identifies the support wheel. If the support wheel is not properly attached, the indicators will look like this. From now on we offer pendulum beta instead of this rigid beta. With the pendulum beta you have the advantage that if there are large stones in the field, the beta can move backwards. And when changing worn parts, you can change the beaters and keep the retainer. That means less wear costs. Now I'll show you how to properly assemble the pendulum beta. Because there are right and left retainers. First dismantle the rigid beaters. Before mounting the pendulum beater, pay attention to the marking on the flange. There is one L for left and one R for right. Storkbuster has four anti-clockwise turning gearboxes on the left side and four clockwise turning gearboxes on the right side. And you have to install the pendulum beater accordingly. That's why we're going to use the left thread in this case. Either clean it with air or recut it with a thread cutter so that the thread is clean. Now put an 8x20 pin in this threaded hole use screw glue, for example Loctite 243. Put a little bit on the front of the thread and then turn the threaded pin in here. Now take the retainer marked with L. Please pay attention so that this mark goes into this notch, otherwise you won't be able to mount it. 
put the retainer on it and secure it with the hex screw. Now take the beater with the curve facing down with the bushing in it, and put it together with the second half of the retainer and the screw. Mount it onto the second half of the retainer. Repeat the procedure for the second beater. Tighten all three screws with 215 newton meters. It is important that you mount the left retainer on the left side, and the right one on the right side. Because there are stops in the retainer, and it allows the beater to go backwards while hitting a stone for example. We are now offering heavy duty blades that have double the lifespan and a modified tooth shape that provides better plant cutting.